and lastly, Harold Strom's The 100 Foot Journey. And uh, Shawni Gupta on my right, she played, if you remember, you will remember, the spunky blind woman in Margarita with a Straw, co-starring Kalki Coughlin. And she now has roles in highly anticipated films, including Mani Sharma's Fan, which has, of course, Shah Rukh Khan, Anurag Basu's Jaga Jasus with Ranbir Kapoor and Katrina Kaif, and Bar Bar Deko by Nitya Mehra with Hati Siddharth Malhotra and Katrina Kaif. Another round of applause for all of them. <laughs> I'd like to start off, um, I don't know if you want me to very briefly describe in just a line some of the very key roles for all of those in the audience who haven't seen all of the films. Margarita with the Straw is about uh, the, the very lively empowerment of a woman with cerebral palsy played by Kalki Kirkland and uh, Shawnee plays her friend and her lover. Uh, Vicky Kaushal, which was in Masan, it's really about um, small town India breaking free somehow out of the constraints of tradition and he and Shweta, of course, play a love story between a lower caste boy and an upper caste woman. And uh, Shashank in Titli has such a brutal role, it's very hard to describe it, about a very low middle class family in Delhi, which really has a criminal, criminal career and is very brutalizing both physically and emotionally. Uh, can I start with a round robin question asking, what, what ha uh, all of you have selected very risky and unconventional roles uh, at a very early stage in your career, some of you in your first roles. What made you take these risks and what has been the payoff so far? Well, you know, um, thank you. It's lovely being here. Uh, thank you, Inakshi. First of all, I'd like to say um, I don't have this voice generally. Uh, <laughs> um, but it suits the motion of the day, so <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, when we are starting out, I mean, I went to film school in Pune, FTII. And uh, honestly, when I was in film school, I thought uh, I'll come to Bombay, obviously, but nobody's going to really give me work as an actor. Uh, so I'll have to assist, you know, and be a assistant to directors and, you know, work as an AD. But I got my first film in the first month of being in Bombay. So I guess there are enough people making films. Um, but coming back to your question, you know, when you're starting out, you don't really have a lot of choice, you know? There are not <laughs> people standing at every nook and corner wanting to give you parts that you like. Uh, as an actress, there, there's anyway a dearth of good parts being written, uh, which again, you know, sort of limits your options. Um, when I got, Ma I mean, when I, when I was told uh, about Margarita with a straw and the first time I got narration, I fell off my chair because I hadn't imagined somebody would, uh, somebody in the country would like to, you know, write and see and make a film like this about a disabled, about two disabled women who fall in love with each other. I mean, who you you must be on crack, but uh, but. Again, you know, the, the moment I heard about the script, and I, I remember speaking to Shweta uh, <laughs> around that time, and it was, it was such a brilliant part uh, that I had to, I had to, had to get the part, you know, and they auditioned me for a month. They made me do the whole script over and over again till they were very, very sure. And uh, a lot of other actresses who were established in the country um, were offered the part. Every dusky uh, woman, actress in the country and in, like in India and Pakistan uh, had auditioned for the part. I thanked every single person who said no to the part. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, for both Kalki and me, there were author back uh, roles. And uh, I, I'm sure that, you know, it'll, it's not every day that you come across such well-written parts to play. And... Uh, I was told that uh, your career is not really going to take off after this film because you know your you know first big film uh, you know, you're playing a lesbian who's blind, uh, <laughs> so uh, and, but I was like you know I mean it's 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 exciting and uh, I get to romance a really hot woman, uh, so I think it's it's full pesa vasool for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, unconventional is nice. Yeah, it's um, oh, I, I'm not really interested uh, in doing, um, you know, in in just being a flower pot in a frame with another hero. So uh, I, I guess, sorry, I'm taking too long. <laughs> so I guess yeah, that's that's what appealed to me in that film. And 
and i kept saying that maybe people won't cast me and would typecast you know this everybody sort of asks you do you do you fear getting typecast uh, i i feel it's the choices in your hand and how you choose your films and uh, right now as you say i mean you i am doing some full on commercial films so i think it didn't really affect my like you know it's probably too early to say but after margarita not things really it's not changed so much yeah i think it's a good sign that the industry is open and not typecast Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Fikki Frames. Thank you, Manakshi, for having us here. Um, I would kind of uh, second what uh, Shayoni just said. Uh, it wasn't that we selected these films, or I selected Masan, and I had like ten other films, and I was like, no, Masan is the film that I want to do. It wasn't that way because uh, because you know, uh, similarly, like my journey started in 2009. I was a graduate in electronics and telecommunications engineer. I wanted to be an actor, and uh, the first thing I did was I assisted Anurag Kashyap on uh, Gangs of Wasipur, and uh, after that I started doing theater and everything. You start giving auditions. and you're just on the lookout for that window of opportunity that you want to showcase your talent and uh, masan just happened because uh, i remember me and neeraj were going to pune in the same car and he just showed me like a 5 minute trailer promo of masan that he had made and he had rajkumar rao that time in his in his head for that part and uh, i looked at it and i was like damn interesting a very good way to go buddy and all of that and three <laughs> three days later i got a call from uh, mukesh chawda casting director and he says you know i want to test you for a part in sure. this film and i was like okay and i go there and he says it's it's for the lead and i was like oh it was it was him and he's like no there are date problems and everything and i was like okay cool and i give the audition i do two scenes sure. from the film and i get selected in a week's time and this was one month before masan started so it just happened very organically and i feel really blessed that it happened and none of us Um, who were part of Masan really imagined what all happened with the film after that, and what all happened uh, with everyone involved in the film. Uh, Neeraj uh, kind of uh, created a sort of uh, history yesterday by winning the national award for best debutant director. So he's he's kind of the only director that I know that he, who's won at Cannes, who's won the film fair, who's won the national award for the same film, which is which is incredible. Check, check. Check. So I think we just we just uh, had a good uh, script thanks to Check. Varun and Check. Neeraj and uh, we just we Check. just went with full Check. honesty and conviction uh, about Check. making the film and uh, yeah just just truly feel blessed about how how Check. things have turned turned around for us. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fikki, for having us here. It's my first Fikki. I'm excited. Thank you, Manakshi. Um, I don't. This is something I can't articulate very well. Like uh, Shauni said. Uh, I didn't choose. I really needed a job when Titli came, so I didn't choose. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really choose Titli. Titli chose me. I'm very blessed that I attracted the sort of artists and the filmmakers that I wanted to work with. And um, on unconventional films, I particularly don't really differentiate between conventional and unconventional as long as the story is something that interests me, or engages me, and the artist is making a film because he wants to make a film. rather than earning a lots of money which is also the end game we all want to earn through our craft and we want to earn through our uh, our work but as long as the starting point of something is is uh, the intention is pure or the intention is just to tell a story i'm attracted to it and i've been blessed that i've just attracted these sort of filmmakers and i'm so happy that this year and last year we have such amazing films we have such amazing artists I'm sitting with some of them so excited it's just a blessing to be a part of it So I'm not going to repeat what they said <laughs> because we already know that. Uh, but it's um, it took me nine years to get my first release, which is Masan. I've been in Bombay uh, for that long, uh, and like all of them said, it's uh, it's a kind of cinema you want to do, which attracts you, and it's it's a, a circle. So uh, when I when Neeraj narrated Masan to me, I just fell in love with my character and the script. so there wasn't a choice of doing it or not doing it i mean and neeraj was very sweet so he said would you like to do it and that time i didn't have any release my uh, other film haram khor which i had already shot for but which still has not been released i just knew that i have to do this because uh, not not because it's bold or risky or any of those adjectives just because it was a good story it was a story that i wanted to be a part of so um, 
I think that if you, like I've always wanted to travel with the festivals. I want that when people talk about my films, it's not just about my work, it's, it should be the film as a product. So uh, I think it's a subconscious thing that we're attracted to those kind of scripts and thankfully those kinds of scripts are being written now. And like Shaoni said, there are hardly any female characters, you know, in fact, uh, so Vicky's uh, next film uh, with Anurag Kashyap, Raman Raghav. So when I got to know about the plot and everything, my first reaction was, why is no one writing a film like this for women? Because I would kill to do that, you know, and uh, there are scripts which... If you kill, you'll definitely get a role. <laughs> well, then maybe. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think um, more than risky, it's, uh, we like to be choosy because uh, I think all of us over here uh, would like to believe in quality cinema more than anything. I heard you, you, you were at a party with Neeraj singing old Bollywood songs <laughs> and that's how you hung out and eventually got the role. Is that true? So it was the short film that I you really like, Sujata. Okay. That was a part of uh, a feature film called Shots. So Neeraj's film, Sujata was the first um, short film of the entire film and Neeraj's film was the last one. So, uh, and I remember I was wearing a sari that day and Neeraj, he's, an, he's a fabulous dancer. <laughs> so he was dancing and I was dancing and both are the so-called indie people, you know. We, and then thankfully I did Sujata and thankfully that party happened and thankfully I danced. So then I became Neeraj's Shalu. Now you know what it got to do. <laughs> I'd like to ask another quick round robin question about what 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 was the way that you prepared for the role? I mean, I, in your case, it's like a really challenging. A woman, blind, Bangladeshi, and lesbian. It's like a, a quadruple challenge, I would say. How did you prepare, and what to you was the most difficult scene in the film for each of you? Um, it, it's quite long. <laughs> I apologize in the beginning. Uh, not going into great detail, I'll try not to go. So uh, when I was um, when I was auditioning for it, and as I said, they were auditioning me for a week, for a month. Uh, the first thing I did was that uh, you know it's not one of those films that you can just learn the lines and go audition. You have to really understand what the world of a blind person is. Um, so I immediately called Nasiruddin Shah because uh, he had taught me in FTI and uh, um, he had done a film called Sparsh. Uh, which I have obviously, it's one of those, uh, you know, exemplary films. And I called him immediately and he had given me a list of exercises that he had done during Sparsh. So I sat at home and I started, you know, I, it started with blindfolding myself, doing my daily chores with the blindfold. I started living with the blindfold, waking up with the blindfold, uh, eventually cooking and things like that um, with the blindfold on. Once I took a friend and went strutting outside the house blindfolded, but thankfully I had a friend, otherwise I would have like... <laughs> um, I obviously uh, also was watching a lot of films uh, like you know scent of a woman etc and um, and that's how I mean I got the part once I got the part I had three weeks left uh, before the shoot would start and Kalki had already been preparing for six months so I was like you know this is not fair guys you have to give me some time they were like no 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 you are nobody please come and <laughs> do a good job <laughs> but uh, and nobody was in Bombay, they were pre-prodding pre uh, in Delhi. And uh, thankfully, I, I was calling everyone if they could hook me up with some people, you know. Uh, so thankfully, I got the uh, contact for the National Association for the Blind, NAB, uh, who were extremely, extremely uh, generous. And uh, I started taking classes with the kids at the blind school. So I got trained in braille and, you know, uh, mobility and uh, a lot of things. So, uh, so I take classes every day for like almost two weeks. And uh, I went and lived in the girls' hostel for the blind, uh, you know, near the Andheri station. Uh, and I, I started meeting a lot of people who were, you know, visually impaired from birth. And uh, every single one of them was different. The way, they, the way their eyes was, the way they moved, every single person was different. And uh, so then was the main challenge to create my own person, to create Khanum, you know. And she was not only blind, but she was also a really, really free-spirited woman who lived in New York. I never uh, visited uh, anywhere outside the country. <laughs> so I didn't really know what, what a world who, you know, uh, who, a girl who was born, born, brought up in New York would feel like, would be like, would talk like. So... Uh, 
So there were difficulties at every level. In Delhi, I met a woman called Madhubala, uh, who was also, because they were also trying to audition people who are actually disabled. Uh, so they auditioned people with cerebral palsy, they auditioned people, for, uh, you know, uh, they were blind. Uh, and she had auditioned, but anyway, she was, I mean, then they sort of took a creative call to cast actors. Uh, so I spent a lot of time with her, and she was uh, visually impaired. Her husband was visually impaired from birth, but they had a kid who was sighted. And I went and stayed with them uh, you know, and spent a lot of time with them. She really took me into her fam you know, family and uh, little details about, you know, how her sex life was, how she would uh, arrange clothes in her wardrobe, how she would arrange utensils in her kitchen, every single thing. And it's so detailed, you know, all of that. Um, but I think I was really struggling till the last minute. Uh, for the first two weeks we were shooting in Delhi, I didn't open my eyes till the shot. Uh, so some people in the crew really thought I was blind and some of the ADs found out later and wanted to push me off the <laughs> first floor because they're like, you know, we've been taking care of you, thinking about blind bastard, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so actually one of the spot dadas, till we packed up in Delhi, actually thought I couldn't see. So he came and held my hand like that. He's like, madam, please take care of yourself and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went to New York and the first half of the film we shot later. That often happens in films, right? And once I went to New York and started, you know, I felt how it was. I actually realized how Kanum would be and her spirit. And suddenly I was like, oh my God, I was doing everything wrong till now. So, uh, so I think, you know, when I see the film, the second half of my performance is much weaker than the first half of my performance. <laughs> so those things happen, right? Uh, so, and one of the, so we also did a lot of intimacy workshop. Uh, we worked with Adil Hussain who workshop with me and Kalki together. We worked uh, with someone called Monsoon, uh, who's a therapist uh, in New York. And uh, we did really great, uh, you know, as long as, as far as the sec intimacy was concerned. <laughs> but, uh, but we felt like two, you know, two sisters trying to be like, who are really fond of each other. But Shonali was like, listen, you have to be like sexually compatible. Like, and we are both awfully straight. And <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you know, for the film, and we're both like, no, 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 it's not happening. <laughs> but you know, eventually we got okay with each other. Um, so yeah, I guess that, that, yeah, that's the preparation. But I'm still preparing for the role, I think. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys up for an intimacy workshop? <laughs> Vicky, would you tell us what was most your most challenging scene and, and your prep for Hassan? Um, so I belong to a very Punjabi family, born and brought up in Bombay. And uh, I was to play the character of Deepak, who's born and brought up in Banaras, and that too at a crematorium. You know, So that was a world which I wasn't aware of at all. And uh, I read the script, so I was very excited because the script was so good. But I was at the same time very nervous. Um, as to how this would go. And the first thing that happened was Neeraj gave me a reference film called Children of Paya. This was a documentary film uh, based on the kids working on the ghat. And uh, it was an, I think, 80, 90 minute film and I couldn't see it in the first go because it was really jarring. And uh, that's when I started watching it again and again, a couple of times every day. And uh, I used to uh, put my headphones on and I used to play the film and I used to try to go to sleep with the sound of that film because it was all about Ram Nam Satya Hai, Ram Nam Satya So I thought it would be like, you know, the character would actually, it would become his lullaby, that that chant would become his lullaby. So I was uh, really aiming at, you know, ki aisa ho ki, you know that, that, that chant would make me go to sleep. So I started working in that mode and I started uh, interacting with Varun and uh, Neeraj because they were prepping for this film for the past three years. Uh, roaming around Banaras and finding stories from Banaras. So I started chatting with them and I got to know that I have to spend a lot of time in Banaras at that place. So this was four weeks before we had to uh, start the shoot. And uh, so I went there and I stayed there for three weeks. And uh, I remember the first time I went on the crematorium ghat, I, I could just stay there for just 15 minutes. And it's got a, it's got a certain kind of smell because that ghat called uh, Manikarnika ghat, at any given point of time uh, in a day, they are burning at least 20 to 25 bodies. Mm. Any given time. And uh, sometimes they're, they're, it, the, that count goes up to like 100, 150. And uh, so the thing is like there's a main road and there's the, the alleys which go to the ghat. And uh, women are not allowed there. And you shot there? Oh. So. I wasn't looking. Right. 
Yeah, if you're shooting for the government, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so I s sat there and it was just 15 minutes and I had to come back to the main road just to, you know, take a breather that, you know, and that's when I realized it's it's really serious, you know, I have to just be there. Mm -hmm. So I started staying there. I used to be there like, for eight, ten hours every day and just stalking people who worked over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to carry my phone and used to open that sound recorder because you can't shoot anything over there. It's a very personal space. So I used to record how they used to talk because Neeraj wanted us to talk in a very local dialect, the Kashika dialect. So I used to uh, record how and what they were speaking, and I used to come back to my hotel room and write it down as a monologue, and I used to prepare that as a script, just to get that dialect right. And the one uh, great tip that Neeraj gave to me was, you know, Vicky, all I want you to do is just surrender to this place, just surrender to Banaras. Don't go with the attitude that, you know, I want to prep for a character or I want to learn some things, because then you'll get only a touristy point of view that, you know, this is how Banarasis operate, or this is how Banarasis live. I want you to be one of them. So, and that's how he said, I have found Masan, by just letting myself go in the city, let, just getting lost in the city, and that's what I tried doing. I just spent a lot of time over there with the people over there, with the food, the ghat, and everything, and I think subconsciously it kind of kicked in. And uh, there's one thing I learned from uh, Nawaz Bhai, uh, because I was an AD on Gangs of Asifur, and his first day, I remember, uh, he, was he was portraying Faisal Khan in the film, and uh, Anuraks had told him that, you know, you are, you're doing great and it's fantastic, but I can see that you're you're trying to be Faisal Khan. I want you to be Faisal Khan. You know, you're just trying to become Faisal Khan. And what he did was he wore the costumes of Faisal Khan and he just went out uh, at one o'clock in the night and he just roamed around in the streets of Banaras telling this to himself that I am Faisal Khan. I'm short, I'm dark, I'm lean, whatever it is, but I am Faisal Khan and I can change whatever I want to do. I can do whatever I want to do in the city. And that was the most crucial uh, step in the prep that I did, that, you know, just telling myself that whatever this is, this is Deepak Chaudhary. And I have been born and brought up in Banaras. And eventually when the film, we started shooting the film, it was all about just surrendering to the writer, surrendering to the director, and just going with the flow. And uh, also interacting with senior actors like Sanjay Mishraji and uh, Richa um, uh, during the shoot. It just, uh, I just got to learn that the most important thing for any actor is to just be alive at that moment. You know, nothing, no amount of preparation can equal to that just one simple fact that you just have to breathe and be alive when the shot is being taken. So I guess that was it. And the toughest scene, I think, was the 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 breakdown scene in the film that, uh, you know, uh, when when uh, my love interest, Shalu's character, played by Shweta, she uh, dies in the film and then um, he goes into depression and, you know, all sorts of things. and. Uh, so he's sitting by the uh, on the banks of the ghat and he has to break down and that wasn't written on the script it was improvised and uh, i remember we used to do workshops and we rehearsed every scene from the film every scene and uh, including improvisations and everything but we didn't touch the scene mm -hmm. because what neeraj told me was you know uh, all i want i just forget the script whatever is written uh, i want you to be very honest you can finish the scene in 5 seconds or you can take 5 minutes to do the scene i don't care but i want very pure emotions and um, i don't drink but then i took a couple of <laughs> sips before the shot and i just sat there yeah, <laughs> And uh, so we had planned something because uh, during the workshop what we used to do was uh, uh, whenever we tried uh, getting the scene right, all we used to do was discuss loss in our personal lives. Neeraj, Avinash, the DOP, Varun, the writer, me. And we just used to discuss loss and how that made us feel. Uh, and we just discussed that and we, I told Neeraj whenever we are shooting that scene, we'll just sit for 10 minutes before we are about to take and we'll just have the session again. And I just sat, th sat there and uh, Neeraj came and he's like, do you want to talk? And I was like, no, let's start shooting. And it just happened and I, I gave the lines and what happened was, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen the film, but uh, the train goes passing uh, in the background and that wasn't planned. It just happened. Oh. And that just wow. made me say, tu kisi rail si yeah, because yeah. that was her no, favorite think, poem, yeah. Shalu's favorite poem. And that made me oh. say five more lines that she used to you know, tell me and say to me, and that made me cry, and that just happened, and oh. so that I was kind of it. tough, and uh, but it was, I think, uh, the most enriching scene also, it, because it was the first time as an actor I felt empty and filled at the same time. Oh, that's that beautifully was, yeah. put. That's very beautiful. Very beautiful. <laughs>
Prashant, you're so horribly criminal. They, they go around, <laughs> his family in, in, in Titli goes around with hammers attacking people. So and to then prepare for his it wife, I, like, uh, to break her hand, to claim insurance. It's so cynical, so cynical. I murdered a lot of people to prepare for it. <laughs> stole a lot of cars, did a lot of drugs. No, no. Uh, I am from Delhi, Titli is from Delhi, but for me, he was so alien to me because I realized that I don't know how 90% of my country lives. And it just, it just sort of struck me that we just don't know. As, as upper middle class people, as middle class people, we don't know how our country lives and we are barely Indian. We don't deserve to call ourselves Indian because we don't live in a similar environment and we don't have similar sentiments and we are not sympathetic to how our own countrymen are. Mm. And I realized uh, that for me to be able to play him, I'll have to live in this area where he's from. And um, not only observe, of course, body language and uh, uh, their lifestyle, also try and understand this need to escape from a slum, which I don't know. I had, you know, I have, I'm blessed to be part of a, a family which fed me since I'm a child and I've had a house and um, here we are in a five-star hotel discussing cinema. So clearly I don't know what it feels like to be hungry for 20 years or to be hit for 20 years. Thankfully, my director, he is closer to this world. So for research, I would sit with him. I would go to the slums in Delhi. Uh, it's a place called Sangam Vihar. There's 12 lakh people there. There's 120 police officers to protect them. They have no electricity. They don't get water. Um, right next to you is a place called Senic Farms, which is one of the poshest localities in our country. And right behind there is one of the poorest uh, slums. So. The more I stayed in this slum, the more I realized that I won't kill the car, why won't I murder the car? Because I don't have anything, I work for everything. I work my ass off. Uh, I'm a student who's studying for an IS exam in a slum, and there's a guy who's in a Pajero next to me who's probably not earning. So there's, you know, it gives rise to this angst. Uh, so it was a mixture of research. It was a mixture of living in the slum. Uh, I'm a geeky actor, so I break down things into body language, into speech, into environment. And so I broke it down into that, and I worked towards it separately. Um, apart from that, I would say a brilliant casting uh, workshop director, Atul Mongya, who is just brilliant, and he's, he's one of the forces in Indian cinema who's responsible for, I think, a lot of organic performances coming out of our films, is this man, Atul Mongya. Um, so that's how I approached it. The tough scene for me, um, the whole film was very tough. I was crying. Kannu made life hell for me. <laughs> Because um, he knew I'm a city boy, he's a brat, he not know what it feels like to be from the slum. So it was this very scary, daunting experience. There's one scene in the movie where I, uh, I throw up, where I'm puking. And um, it wasn't looking real, because I wasn't actually puking. So Kanu was like, why don't you actually puke? You know, why don't you actually puke? I was like, how do I do it? Do tell me. I stick a finger in my throat twice, nothing came out. I was too nervous. So then we took uh, about a kg of oatmeal, khichdi, haldi, namak. Uh, we mixed all these things together and I drank it. And after that, uh, we took highly condensed salt water, oh, no. like about 250 grams of salt in about 500 ml of water. And I drank it. And then we waited, acha, das, nine. Acha, ulti aari hai, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we. That's how we did that scene. I threw up, I fell ill, and uh, five hours later, about six times we took that take. Oh, After that, he was like, okay, now we need you to be fresh, because the first shot of the sequence, you're looking fine. So let's, let's do it, light is going, bas ho gaya, ulti ho gaya. And I'm like... <coughs> and so, that was tough. Otherwise, the whole movie was very tough. It was, it was a blessing, but a tough experience, man. I'm not sure if this is true or not, so please tell me. Um, that apparently for one scene where Shivani and you had to be crying, you guys had been crying since morning, and Kanu made you cry throughout the day, and in the evening when you guys had been crying and your eyes were so dry that there were no tears left, that's when the shot was done. Yeah, that, no, that was true. And I was also crying because it was Delhi and it was 45 degrees. And, <laughs> and, yeah, and this is this Yashraj film, and I'm like, I want it, you know, it's like so much pressure. I was like, what's going on? It's, uh, Wow. What about hammering her hand? I just find that, I mean, of many horribly graphic things. Hmm. She's talking about... You know. No, that comes easily to Indian men. We're, <laughs> we're, we're patriarchal assholes. So we, we, we know how to, you know, hit our women right. <sighs> Unfortunately, yeah, no, this... That was something which I worked towards for Titli also because I, I have an older sister and I've been hanging out with women since I'm a little boy. And the more I got into Sangam Vihar, I started realizing that I have no idea 
about this masculine overdose in India. It's sick. And I got an idea of that. And so I played Titli like a, a, a yeah, I'll just leave it to Sheta now. You know, these characters enrich us so much as people. And Neeraj has said this. He said that you guys are so lucky that you've lived the life of Deepak, Shalu. I think which is also why we choose the kind of roles we do. Um, so, Masan, <laughs> um, uh, how I... So there are a lot of things as, a, as an actor you think that this is how you will prepare for the role. But uh, especially when you're doing your first film or second film, you realize that that's not how films uh, work. So I thought obviously before the shoot, now because I'm a Delhi girl brought up in uh, Delhi now in Bombay for nine years, that I'll go to Banaras and I'll spend time with them and uh, my uh, friends who are in the films, spend time with them, talk to them, find out about their lifestyle, how they talk. And so it'll be fairly simple. Now, obviously, it's a small budget film, so I, I get to know that only Vicky is going to Banaras. So I was like, but how do I prepare for the film? <laughs> like, and everybody, Neeraj, the entire team has gone. So I was like, you have a budget for all of them, but at least give me three days. So, but that wasn't the case. So I landed, and the next day we started shooting. So A, that went out of the window. Then I was like, in Bombay, how do I prepare for a girl who has been born and brought up in Banaras? So uh, because we, we talk in English, we listen to English songs, the kind of movies that we see. So Neeraj had given us uh, all the actors a set of films. So my films uh, included Nadia Ke Uspar, which was very difficult to watch. <laughs> and then he said he wanted, Jo Jita Hai Vahi Sikandar, Usme Jo Bhabi Ka Jo role tha. He said, that's your reference. And I was like, what? I said, okay, fine. So I'll try uh, doing justice to it. Also, I remember the first um, reading we had at Phantom. Um, now again, as a uh, city girl, you know, we don't read in Hindi that much. So our first reading, uh, I didn't even know how to pronounce Bashir Badr. So I remember Richa was correcting him and Shairi Vairi thi. So uh, thankfully, Neeraj had already finalized me for the part. Vanatab Shahid, some changes would have been made. And I was really enjoying, but I really could not read Hindi that fluently. To a girl who sochti shairi mein hai and baat vaise karti hai. So uh, uh, I went to Prithvi, I picked up a lot of uh, shairi ki kitabe asked Varun ki kis type ki shairi padegi because I don't want to read the kind of shairs Shweta would like. I want to read the kind of, you know, uh, the books that my character would like. So uh, then just basic things like that. Then I uh, spoke to my casting director. I said, can I please have the numbers of the girls who are playing my friends? Because I want to, you know, have that bond with them. But obviously, they won't cast it. So I never got to talk to them before again reaching on set. So these are things you just learn on the job that you have to get into character and whatever you might think, but workshops really help. Again, we did workshops with Varun and Neeraj. Uh, what really helped, again, was having Varun on set. Because Varun is a writer of the film. So whatever doubt we had, if, or if he even wanted to change anything, so they were very open to that. Um, uh, the most, uh, it, it, was, it might seem as a fairly simple thing to most people, but uh, before a scene, I'm sure all of us, we like to prepare ourselves that, okay, now we've finished the scene now. Uh, and it was a very nice, uh, sweet, romantic scene uh, we had done. And the next scene was where uh, we've had a fight. So I'm really depressed. I'm feeling very hollow. So I was in that mood and I was like, Vicky ko kahi aas paas mat aane do. And you know, so I was in that really, I could just break down any moment. And I'm in that, change my clothes. And then suddenly this AD comes in like, are san ja san ja san ja scene change. And I was like, what? And it was a very sweet scene that we were supposed to do. And I said, that's not fair. As an actor, I'm in my mood. I'm in my costume. Now, within two minutes, you want me to change everything and get into this theory. It was a scene on the terrace where I'm talking to him on the phone. I said, how am I supposed to? And I was so angry because I felt, I felt it's so unfair to actors that son is you know, deciding which scene we are going to do, not the director or not the actors. So then I went and I was really thought that I'm doing the scene so badly. But when I saw Neeraj smiling, looking at the monitor, I said, OK. So yeah. I think one of the, uh, sorry. I think one of the great things of, uh, many great things of Masan is so much, so much Varun Grover's writing. That's true. And I was wondering as actors, how much do, is, is what you, of course it's your craft and your dedication, and how much would you credit the roles that were written, the screenplays that were written, and the way the characters were visualized? And did you have any interaction 
in fine tuning the characters absolutely and i think writing makes a huge difference that even if uh, obviously we brought a lot every actor brings a lot to the table but even if anybody would have just said those lines what varun had written you will just feel those emotions coming from you like you really don't have to try too hard uh, uh, to feel that or to be the character because uh, people like varun neeraj the way they and they've lived the character for 3 years so it was very easy for us to know where this character is coming from and who this character is and then together they help you find it yeah. so but definitely hats off to varun and yeah, but then the thing is they spoil you because now you know we are yeah, used to scripts and characters <laughs> which are so well written but i think one of the thrilling things was that someone of his age would really you know look into uh, poetry and classical literature and bring that to main you know well not mainstream but uh cinema that scene in bombay and the metros and i think that's also very special because it becomes a kind of bollified hindi Correct, and what yeah. he brought was such a rootedness uh, yeah. and poetry yeah. which was really so lovely and also drawing from literature even in the songs True. i mean it's yeah. so long since we did that yeah. so shashank how much would you say as well um uh, so kanubel and sharat katare had sharat katare who did this fabulous also directed dam laga ke hai shamin it's such thrilling work uh, how much did you um how much would you credit the screenplay for uh, running and did you have any interaction in terms of for example she said varun was on the sets which may not have been in every case in terms of fine tuning your character um well i give almost all the credit to the writer because it's the blueprint of the film and if you don't have a good blueprint to a building chances are it'll fall down mm. it makes it easier of course as an actor if your writing is economical if it's beautifully written if the world of the story is believable it's um, Yes. So it's of course I credit the writer, but an actor's job is to give life. From uh, um, we all read text from a different perspective. We all had different lives, and um, when we we read a character, we sympathize with different parts of that character. So a writer puts in his world. He puts in the world he uh, he belongs to, or the world he's trying to write down. And an actor can add different sorts of life to it, but. credit goes to writers we need you know of course it's cinema it's a great cinema time. i think probably the best time we have in indian cinema for of course i think roles that are being written yeah and, and that's i think been a a weak path that we haven't supported our writers in in cinema monetarily be it with yeah. time we've been like chalo chalo kal tak rewrite karne ka hai abhi uh, okay okay so this is not how it's going to happen this is not how cinema will uh, evolve in our country i love writers give uh, me jobs 